Alright, so today we're going to be looking at a, uh, a Pentax 645N. So the, um, the camera itself isn't the issue. Uh, this is a, a lens issue with the 75mm uh, FA 2.8. The issue that we're having here with this camera is that the autofocus gear uh, is stripped out pretty badly. So we're going to be taking apart this lens. You can see at one point the lens was dropped. It's got a big piece taken out there. This is a plastic mount, so they're pretty prone to breaking like that. It's not uncommon to see something uh, to that effect there without having any performance issues. So gonna go ahead take this lens off and get started on the disassembly on it so just right off the bat here on the back we're just looking at four screws coming off the uh, rear mount so Once we've got that off, we can just lift this rear bracket off. We're just going to take that and set it down to the side. Right off the bat, we can kind of see that this gear is slipping. When I rotate it with my fingers, it'll sometimes catch. But it looks to be that this one is going to be uh, our main problem there. So we're going to go ahead and take off these one, two, three, four, five, six black screws. And then we'll uh, look at these three, the two silver ones and the black one there in just a second once we get these off. These screws are in very, very tightly, so just take your time. Keep firm, even, consistent pressure on them. Um, don't try to get them all out in one go. Just sort of wiggling back and forth with a lot of pressure is going to be your best bet on getting these out without stripping them. You can hear that loud click. That's the uh, the Loctite breaking free inside the uh, screws. So, just a little quick secret. If you're having a lot of trouble and you're feeling like any of the screws are starting to strip, um, this piece is too brittle to leave it just flat down like this. Um, unless you had the lens cap on to support it around. But if you have, um, sometimes they have called ratcheting screwdrivers, which would be great in a situation like this, where basically uh, it's a small hammer point that you hit on the back end and it rotates the, uh, the bit around. It just loosens it up, but it's something that you're going to have to figure out as you're going along. This one, again, these are uh, very tightly secured inside here so we're going to try to move this up now and see if we can get underneath here all right now that we've got that i'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off getting those three screws out here but we're gonna get this spring out of the way it just connects down onto this post so you can see that spring coming down here attaching to the aperture arm and I'm just going to get these three screws off here real quick very careful because these are pogo pins so they're gonna start falling out and it's not gonna be fun trying to find them so this is typically why I leave uh, taking that part off until the very end um, just because removing them makes it a bit of a hassle so now that we've got those two pins out um, so our far right pin over here and then a grounding pin or a grounding spring there. 
All right, so we're going to be disassembling the rest of the lens here now that we've got these uh, pins out of the way. Uh, so it's just these four screws down in here. We're just going to take these out. Now that we've got all our four screws out, we can take this whole rear mount assembly off. Just being careful not to move things around too much. There are uh, spacers in between here, so we're going to want to keep everything lined up. We can see those brass spacers down in there, and that's used for calibration at the factory. So right here we can see our gear. Um, it's not actually stripped out. But what's going on is it doesn't have enough torque. The uh, the spline has come loose from the inside of the uh, gear. So we're going to go ahead and take off our uh, just our bottom screws right here. And uh, hopefully that will give us enough leverage to just take this guy out. Because this one's really the only one that we're after right now. Just the main input gear. So we're going to take these two screws off here, this one there, and that one there, in addition to the one that we just took off right here. And so at this point now we're going to take off this screw here that's attached to this little contact pad. just pick this up and move it over. It's glued down a little bit so just be careful not to bend it. And then we're going to take this piece here and just slide it out. There's a little ball bearing under there so just be careful not to send it flying. Uh, the bearing is just on this upside there. Right there. So, Alright, well I'm going to go get a magnet and go and retrieve that bearing that I just lost. Alright, so if you have strong magnets like these, they work super well for finding these guys. Uh, this just shut off even after I was anticipating it doing so. So just having magnets around is a huge help. Just get you all the little pieces that want to go off into oblivion. But anyways, uh, we're going to be able to take off this gear assembly now by uh, removing this screw here on the far left side. So just like that, we've got our gear assembly out, and we're going to take this and set it off to the side. So again, the piece that we're going to be focusing on is this guy right here, the one the input drive motor gear. Um, so what the problem again with it is that it's a little bit stripped out down there in the bottom. I'm going to take off this little washer here on the top and get that set over. And so we're going to be cleaning this up, greasing it, but also taking uh, the assembly apart so we can get a better idea about what's going on here with this guy. So if you need a reference, this is what it looks like. before it's taken apart. So it's just these two screws here on the bottom that we're going to take off. So all I did was I took the screw off here on the left side and I loosened the one on the right. That way I didn't have to take the whole assembly apart um, just because I don't, I don't really need to right now. Straight away, we can see that we have a splined gear here on the bottom, and this gear is just completely stripped out on it. Real quick for your reference, you can see that there's actually a tiny lip 
coming out on the back side of the gear facing that way. So when you put this together, make sure that that tiny lip is on this outside. Uh, you want it to be the flat side going in up here. So we're actually, we're gonna take a close look here real quick at why um, this gear uh, stripped out. And it's not so much to do with the splines up here. <laughs> this is a similar to the repair that we actually just did on the, uh, the Zeiss 100 F2.8. And uh, this is just a case where it's a metal one instead of a plastic one. But I'm gonna try to get something down here so you can see this real quick. Right there the gear is cracked right down the side. So, uh, at this point, um, this one should still work if you can get it reattached properly with some good quality Loctite or uh, some sort of thermally bonded uh, two-part epoxy. Or, in better yet, if you had a replacement gear of the same size, I'm gonna go look around and see if I have one of these on hand. Um, it's a I'll get the dimensions here out for you in a second. So this is an 11 gear, or an 11 toothed gear. The outer diameter looks to be about four millimeters. And the inner diameter looks to be about 1.75 millimeters on that inner diameter. And again, it's 11 teeth, four millimeters on the outside, 1.75 on the inside. So, in case you needed that reference for uh, getting a replacement before you start on your own repair, but I'll be back in just a second, and we'll get uh, we'll get this all taken care of. All right, so uh, we're back now. As you can see, I've got this whole thing reassembled. Um, <coughs> what we what I ended up doing here with this one is the blue Loctite isn't strong enough to keep a good grip on the splines and the uh, gear. So what I ended up doing was I took I took the gear off and I put a little bit of uh, of flux on the end of the splines and I put the gear on and then I took some solder and actually went in through the top and just soldered around the top. I put my heat gun. Uh, I don't know if a soldering iron would be able to get this hot enough, but I put the heat gun down on the top of the gear until it got hot enough that when I put the solder in I could just wick it around the top. Uh, just being careful not to get any solder down into the splines. I did get a little bit of solder down in two of the little valleys in the gear and I just took a razor blade and just uh, carved it out until it was smooth rotationally. But uh, as you can see I can't gear out this uh, first primary gear anymore as hard as I can hold it down and twist with my other hand because now we have a, a solid connection all the way through that and that should hold up just fine. So what we're going to do now is get this reassembled, get everything tested out and see how it's working. So we're just going to take our gear assembly, we're going to lift up this little spacer here and we're going to drop this guy down into here. Got to pick up this spacer for a second and put it back down and then we're going to get our two screws in there on the side and get them uh, put in. So we've got those two screws in and just real quick I'm just going to give it a little test just to make sure everything's good. Seems like we're doing all right. At this point, we're going to be putting our uh, manual focus, autofocus uh, lever in over here. And it's a little bit tricky again because we do have that little ball that needs to go in and under on top of that spring. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put a little bit of... um white lithium grease on that just to keep it locked into place. And we'll be able to just kind of lift this up 
<laughs> hopefully get that over the top of it. Um, probably going to have to end up just holding that ball down. Oy. All right, I'll be back. And we're back. Sorry about that. A little ball went flying off into the oblivion. Again, magnets are a beautiful thing. So I'm going to try again to get this locked down in here. So we've got the little ball down there now. Just going to try one more time. Just get that pushed down while I slide this gear over on top of it. And hope and pray that it stays in place. So the best way looks like it's just uh, directly pushing this all the way in and then trying to get that ball to stick under there on that spring. If this takes you a while, don't worry about it. It's not, not exactly the easiest thing in the world to get into place properly. All right, so I'm gonna try a little bit of a different method here. I'm gonna try and move everything over to the right. And go back and get a little more grease on here. And just again, just gonna keep trying until we eventually get it. All right. So it looks like we just got that in there now. <coughs> We're just gonna place our uh, brass locking tab down on there. So this little brass bracket is just to hold that assembly in place um, and uh, the contact switch that lets the lens tell the camera whether it's in auto or manual focus. So we'll just go ahead and test that out here. See that we've got a good solid click. It's working all right. So we're gonna go ahead now and put our little switch back on here and we're just gonna try to make sure to lock it back in that same position that it was when we took it off. Um, being careful not to bend any of the connections. So when you're putting this one on, you might wanna hold it with two hands um, or have something glued down on the top. I'm just gonna hold it to the side just so I can finish tightening it. We can see now that that switch clears the two pads when we bring it over, and that's what puts the camera into manual and autofocus. So I'm going to go ahead now and start reassembling the rear here. It's going to flip this piece upside down. All right. And so at this point, uh, we're just lining up that aperture pin here. Let's see, it opens and closes. It's the one that goes right in the middle. Um, you'll see, well, actually I'll pull it back apart so you can see what I'm talking about. So down in here, right there in that open space because the, the aperture arm will try to go down into there and it'll try to go down in there but you need to make sure it goes down into that one. And then if the body has sort of come down, you'll want to ring rack the focus back up to the top so we can get these screws back in up here so I just like to go crisscross like one side go to the other and then do the same for the other side and at this point we can test real quick to make sure that we've got all of our stuff aligned correctly Make sure our focus moves all the way down. All oh, that's looking good. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is reassemble the two pins that we took out of here. Get that rear mount bracket back on. We're gonna make sure we get our little washer here back on our input gear, as well as the spring that goes on top of that. So we have the spring and the other pogo pin that we took out of there.
All right, so we're finally able to get that back in. Took about 15, 20 minutes. It's really not the easiest thing to do, uh, but once you're able to get it, um, the rest of the assembly is quite easy. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that spring reattached on our aperture arm. Uh, and that one just comes down up here and grabs onto the bottom, this bottom bracket right down there that we looked at earlier. All right, so finally got the spring put back on. You can see it down in there. Took me about five, 10 minutes or so to get that on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and get all these uh, black screws put back in the back. And uh, just in a moment, we'll be testing this out on the camera and checking out how it works. So I like to use a little crisscross, just helps to keep everything straight when it's going back on and also uh, to keep the pressure even from one side to the other. All right, now we can get our back on and this is relatively simple. Just get that down on there. And then we have four more screws and then our reassembly is complete. Can verify real quick here that my aperture is in the correct position. Um, I have it set to A currently. So we'll hold this dial over here down, and we can see that just at full open, it's right there. I can't go down anymore. If I bring it down one, you can see it go down. So. I'm going to get this lens cleaned up here real quick, just with a little bit of a ROR lens cleaner and some Q-tips. This is what I prefer to use. If you've got a little bit of dust on the front, it's best to just sort of wipe it off with the dry end of the Q-tip first. All right, so got the lens all cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and mount this onto the body and uh, check it out. our first test right now we have it in manual focus so perfect it's not moving it's not doing anything we can manually focus it so I'm gonna throw it in auto and see what we get No, this lens um, and this body in particular struggle a lot in low light, so that's why you're seeing it hunt for focus a lot. And I'm also really close to a lot of things, and this camera doesn't have an exactly super close focusing distance on it. Um, it's about about two feet or so, a little bit closer than that, but. See that lock focus there, but it's a rather noisy lens, but it's a super sharp and usually nails focus pretty darn well and just you know nice medium format camera system. Uh, I'd say the 75 fa is probably either the best or the Mamiya 81.9 uh, adapted over is also really nice, but the 75 seems to be the pretty pretty much gold standard for the 645N. So if you're looking at buying this camera, um, that's probably the lens you might want to look at. Given the price of the FA models though, you might just be better getting off the manual focus A version. Um, but whatever uh, suits your needs. Uh, just overall a great camera, just a, a real pleasure to use and a great system to shoot on. Medium format is pretty much the, the gold standard for hybrid photographers. So I hope this video was useful for you if you have the same problem with your 75 FA and you're looking at getting it fixed. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. 
If you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.